I'm Sam Wetmore and I'm here today to show you a little bit about the WK ID controller. The ID was developed by WK Audio in Germany specifically for use with the Nuendo workstation. The basic ID is divided into four sections. We have an edit section here with shuttle wheel, transport control and other edit buttons. Above that we have the studio monitor controller which allows us to control the various speakers in our studio. Over here we have the fader pack with the motorized faders, solo and cut buttons. And above that we have the channel strip. Here we have the transport button panel which allows us to control the playback of our Nuendo system. Here we have a very high resolution jog shuttle wheel which can perform a number of useful functions when combined with these buttons here. Also included is a trackball, which can be used as a replacement for the standard computer mouse. And above that we have a keyboard. As well as serving as a standard computer QWERTY keyboard, a number of exciting functions including track arming, soloing and others are possible. Other buttons on the edit section include user-definable keys that can be defined to any function within the Nuendo program. And the same goes for these user buttons as well. Also, as you'd expect, we have pretty much a function per button for all of the standard editing tools, such as copy, cut, paste, etc. As well as other function buttons for fades, crossfades and other such elements. Let us take a closer look at the fader pack of the ID controller. You can see that we have 12 very comfortable 100mm motorized faders. We also have solo and cut buttons, very much the same as an analog console. And you can also see that they can be paired. One common question, with only 12 faders on a standard ID, how could I gain access if I had more than 12 tracks? Well, there's a great way of dealing with that problem. For example, here we have laid out the first 12 channels of our project and they're labelled accordingly up here so I can clearly see the names of each channel for example Foley, Atmosphere, Music, things like that. If I want to know what is on the next set of 12 channels then they're available on this row up here and again the display labels the tracks accordingly. Also we can adjust the channel level with these rotary encoders here. If, like me, you're a little bit traditional, you may want to use the faders to control the level. What we can do is actually flip all 12 channels, swapping this area and this fader bank over very simply by pressing the flip button. You can see that the original 12 channels have now swapped with those above it, and the illuminated flip lights show that this mode is active. We can simply reset that by pressing this button here. And another welcome feature is that we can actually select individual channels to flip if we don't need all 12 at once. Other buttons on the fader pack are available for automation and also there's the all important expand button. The channel strip section provides extensive functionality for the editing of all Nuendo track parameters. To access any particular track, very simply we select the channel we want to work with and press the expand button. Once we've done this, the channel's information is displayed up here. For example, here we are looking at a dialogue channel. Immediately some of the key parameters are available to us, such as panning, some of the EQ settings, etc. But we can look at each part of the channel's makeup in much more detail. So let us now take a more comprehensive look at the equalization. Very simply press the EQ button and now this whole section is dedicated to the EQ parameters for that channel. If we want to make any adjustments, we can use the endless rotary encoders. Here I'm adjusting the Q value. Here I'm changing the frequency. There is also a particularly nice feature with these encoders. At the moment they're working in a wide mode, but we can switch that into a fine mode which increases the sensitivity of the encoder, allowing a much more precise control of the EQ adjustments. Immediately, I've been able to save time by not having to open a window, select the track, bring up the channel, strip on the screen, etc, etc. 
As well as the EQ, we can also access the inserts. Each channel has eight inserts available to it, and in fact, we can assign plugins directly from this controller without having to, again, go into the program, click on something, etc., etc., etc. So here I want to assign an effect into insert slot 1. In order to do that, select Insert, choose Patch, and then dial in whichever effect I want. In this case, we'll go underground and select the tube. Get a little bit of a valve warm thing going. Whenever we insert an effect, immediately the appropriate parameters appear here. Now the tube is quite a basic plugin, so it provides simply drive, balance, and an overall volume. If we need to, we can bypass that plugin very simply by pressing the bypass button here. If we want to assign a plugin to insert slot 2, very simply press insert 2, again choose patch, and just dial in the plugin that we want. In this case, I'll choose overdrive. As you can see, Overdrive has more parameters than the Tube plugin. And again, we can go in and make adjustments and changes to all of the settings immediately, without having to find it on the screen and trawl through all of that. We also have access to all of the panning functions. This project is only stereo, so a simple left-right pan is available. But we can also control the amount going to the low frequency effects channel. And within a surround context, we could also add an additional fully motorized joystick to our ID controller. As well as those elements, we can also access and control all our auxiliary sends. What I'm going to do now is call up a virtual instrument. In this case, we'll select the Steinberg A1 synthesizer, an included Nuendo plugin. Now I want to edit its parameters using my controller. Very simply press Edit Instrument, and immediately our channel strip displays the parameters for this synthesizer. Any third-party VSD instrument plugin will send back the same information, so you're not just restricted to the included plugins. You can use your favorites from the likes of Arturia, or Native Instruments, or even Shareware. If the instrument has quite a few parameters, such as this one, you can simply browse through the various pages available by using the Select knob. In this case, there are four pages. And of course, I know which function is which, as they're all carefully labeled. For example, if I want to change the cutoff frequency, I can simply grab the appropriate encoder. If I want to detune my oscillators, I could do that easily too. And all of the functions and feel of a traditional synthesizer are available to me. And again, I haven't had to go into the program, find the plugin, make sure I can see the parameters, move my mouse, select the thing I want to change, drag the knob or slider. I've saved an awful lot of time. Finally, we have a particularly fine meter bridge, which provides an instant visual feedback of the channel levels. So, taken all together, we have a fine way of getting hands-on with Nuendo. WK ID provides simply the best controller for the discerning professional.